All right, we are ready to play our Great Loop trivia. You can see the first question is already there on the board, but we are going to go ahead and get started. So question number one for 50 points. Can you complete the Great Loop if your boat's beam is 25 feet? So for those with a beamy catamaran, can you complete the Great Loop? And the choices are no, you cannot. Yes, but you can't do the Trent Severin. Yes, but you can't do the Erie Canal or yes, but you can't do the Champlain Canal. So in other words, which of those canals do any of them have a width restriction that would not allow you to do the loop? And the correct answer is yes, you can, but you cannot do the Trent Severn and 57% of you got that correct. So congratulations on that. Our leaderboard will pop up in just a moment. Please keep in mind that the leaderboard can only show 20 people. So we know there are way more of, the, than, of you than that playing. Um, unfortunately, we can't fit everybody on here. Next question, what is the fastest known Great Loop trip? And I know most people are not about how fast they can do it, um, but some members are. And the fastest one a member has uh, reported to us was either four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks or 10 weeks. Which of those do you think is the fastest known Great Loop trip? And the correct answer is six weeks. Half of you got that right. Congratulations. That was just in the last couple of years. Um, so, uh, yep, that was one of our members and did it with his son and, and was thrilled with the way they did it. It was the time that they had available. So, as always, we encourage you to make the Great Loop your own. And there's our leaderboard. We've got a little bit of change going on to the leaderboard. Next question. How many boats have finished the Great Loop so far in 2021? Is it 41, 25, 3, or zero. We've reported this number during the best of the loop. It has changed slightly since then, but we're going with the number we reported to you a week and a half ago during the best of the loop. So what is the correct answer to the number of boats that have completed the Great Loop this year? 41, 25, 3, or zero. And the correct answer is three. Highly unusual year, and we think that it is related to the fact that this time last year, so few people were interested in starting out on their great loop. So we're seeing lots, many fewer completions this year than we saw last year. And a little bit of a change there to our leaderboard, Marcus and Christine, congratulations for moving into first place. The next question, what river will you take to get from New York Harbor to the Erie Canal? Is that the Potomac, the Philadelphia, the New York, or the Hudson? Which river? And while we are waiting for the answers to that somewhat simple question, I do want to thank Michael Martin from Curtis Stokes and Associates for sponsoring our trivia game. Michael is traveling today for a client and can't be with us, but he asked me to pass along his well wishes and thank you for playing the trivia game. And the Hudson, of course, is the river that leads you from New York Harbor up to the Erie Canal and 98% of you got that correct. So well done, everyone. And Marcus and Christine remain at the top of the leaderboard. I think Rob and Robin have moved up a bit though. I don't recall seeing them that close to the top recently. So congratulations and Andrew, of course, in third place. The next question, what is the air clearance on the Western part of the Erie Canal? 19 feet, 17 feet, 15 feet or 13 feet. And of course, this is a key stat this year, unless the US Canadian border opens to recreational traffic. Um, many of you would like to take the, the Western Erie rather than having to deal with the Welland. So what is the clearance on the Western portion of the Erie Canal? And the correct answer is 15 feet and three quarters of you got that answer correct. So again, well done. And we've got a move into third place on the leaderboard for Richard Butler. Um, there's actually a, a big tie for third place. Richard, Fred, and Marcus and Christine are all tied for third place. Next question. Georgian Bay is part of which Great Lake? Huron, Michigan, Erie, or Superior? Hopefully, if you were here with us for Roy's presentation just a few minutes ago, this is going to be an easy one for you. 
Um, so which Great Lake is, uh, is the location of Georgian Bay? Huron, Michigan, Erie, or Superior? And that of course is Lake Huron. This is another one almost all of you got correct. So congratulations and well done on that one as well. And the we now have a three-way tie for first place. So first, second, and third are all with the same score. Robin, Robin, Andrew, and Marcus and Christine remaining near the top of the leaderboard. Next question, when is the next lot closure on the Illinois Waterway expected? Is that 2022, 2023, 2024, or 2025? So there is another three-month closure expected on the Illinois Waterway. It is actually part two of the maintenance that was done in 2020. Um, they have not announced, announced the exact dates, but we're expecting a July through October uh, closure once again. And that is in 2023. So those of you who are planning absolutely something you should be aware of, still doable, um, still possible to do the loop with that closure. It was done by some in 2020 and 2019 had a long closure as well. So still doable, um, just takes some extra planning. And with that, uh, Robin, Robin and Marcus and Christine have moved into a two-way tie for the lead. Fred and Andrew are tied for second. Where is the lowest fixed bridge on the Great Loop route that does not have an alternate way around? Is it on the Erie Canal, the Champlain Canal, the Illinois Waterway, or the Tentom, also known as the Tennessee Tom Big B Waterway? The lowest fixed bridge with no alternate route. So you have to go under this bridge if you're going to complete the entire Great Loop. And that is the Illinois Waterway. That is the bridge at mile 300.5 on the Illinois Waterway. And it is charted at 19.6 feet, I believe. It might be 19.7. But that is your lowest fixed point, so you must go under that bridge. Congratulations, Marcus and Christine. The lead is now yours alone. And uh, we are playing for a three-year AGLCA membership extension. So keep that in mind for the winner. Why do most loopers take the Tensom route instead of the lower Mississippi? Uh, there are more services available for recreational vessels on the Tentom. There are fewer commercial vessels on the Tentom, both of the above or neither of the above. So what are the reasons that most loopers take the Tentom instead of the lower Mississippi? And that is both of the above. Uh, the answer that is marked as correct there is actually wrong. So we will, we're gonna have to go with that. Our apologies for that mistake. It is both of the above. Um, we'll see if we can make some score adjustments, but I don't think we have the ability on the back end to determine who was right and who was wrong on that question. So we basically just have to throw that one out. Our apologies, that is incorrect. Moving right along, along which river is the Shiloh National Cemetery? Is it along the Illinois River, the Mississippi River, the Ohio River, or the Tennessee River? It is along one of the states, the rivers with the state names, um, and those are four that are part of the Great Loop. So which one is the Shiloh National Temp Cemetery located along? And the answer there is the Tennessee River. Well done, 84% got that correct. I thought that was a little bit of a harder one, but you all know your geography and history. So good job. Next question. Oh, sorry, leaderboard. There we go. Uh, Marcus and Christine remain in the lead. Next question. What city was most recently named the best big city on the loop? Was it Chicago, Ottawa, Charleston, or New York? Four wonderful cities on the Great Loop. One of them was most recently named the best city on the loop. So which of those four was it? And the correct answer is Charleston. Two thirds of you got that correct, of course, 
arguably not quite as big of a city as New York or Ottawa or Chicago, um, but certainly a bigger city than many of the small rural towns along the way. So congratulations to Charleston. And Marcus and Christine have extended their lead slightly. So we've got a two-way tie for second, Michael and Barbara moving into second place and Rob and Robin, congratulations. Next question, which side trip is most likely to include manatee and alligators? The Cumberland River, the North Channel in Georgian Bay, the St. John's River, or all of the above? Which of those side trips is likely to have some wildlife that might include manatee and alligators? And the correct answer is the St. John's River. I think that's pretty close to one of the highest percentages we got correct. Of course, you're not going to find alligator and manatee in those colder climates. So the St. John's is well known as a wildlife haven for among side trips. And Michael and Barbara hold on to second place with Marcus and Christine holding on to first and Robin Robin holding on to third. Next question, in which best of the loop categories was a place in Paducah, Kentucky listed? Paducah had uh, which of the following as the best of? Was it have, did it have one of the best festivals? One of the best dishes or meals? One of the best museums? or did it have all three of those categories in the best of? So we're talking Paducah, Kentucky. And Paducah did have one of all of the above. The quilt museum was the museum category. The barbecue on the river was one of the best festivals. And the filet at Doe's Eat Place was one of the best dishes all in Paducah, Kentucky. And that brings Michael and Barbara to a tie with Marcus and Christine for first place. Rob and Robin hold on to third, and we've still got Fred holding on close as well. Next question, how many miles long is the Trent Severin waterway? We've seen the presentation on that. We covered it in the best of the loop. Is it 44 miles, 140 miles, 240 miles, or 340 miles? So we're looking for the total length of the Trent Severin waterway. And the correct answer is 240 miles. Uh, well done, two thirds of you got that question correct. I am not a numbers person, so I thought that would be a tough one, but obviously most of our members knew that one. And we're back to a tie for first place, but Fred has moved up into second, I'm sorry, third. Well, third place, yeah, because we've got a two way tie for first. Next question, where are all three of the best of locks located. So in the best of presentation, the, all three of the best locks on the route were in which waterway? The Rideau Canal, the Trent Severin, the Chicago River, or the Erie Canal? Which of those waterways boasts all three of the best locks along the Great Loop route? And that, of course, is the Trent Severin. So uh, most of you got that correct. Congratulations. And those, of course, were the Peterborough Lift Lock, the Big Chute Marine Railway, and then I think it was lock number seven, if I'm not mistaken. It was one of the historic locks there that had power available. Um, so Marcus and Christine hang on to the lead with Michael and Barbara second and Fred moving into third. But third place has been quite a toss up for the last several questions. Next question, why was the Big Chute Marine Railway designed without connecting the waterways? They thought the roller coaster like ride would be fun. It was cheaper to build over land. They didn't want to disrupt the roadway or to prevent the migration of invasive species. So which of those? The correct answer is the one I gave during the best of the loop presentation. Chad may have alluded to some of the other reasons in his talk. And the answer uh, is to prevent the migration of invasive species. So 75% of you got that correct. Well done. Okay, let, let's look at the leaderboard. Um, Marcus and Christine remain first, Fred and Barbara, I'm sorry, Michael and Barbara remain second, and Fred has got a 50 point lead on third place at this point. So uh, 
more changes to that. Next question, how many lighthouses are on Lake Michigan? Is it 23? Is it 45? Is it 68? Or is it 102? And during the presentation, the um, best lighthouses, um, the Mich Lake Michigan lighthouses were collectively listed as the best of, one of the best lighthouses. So which number is correct? And that is 102 is correct. So that's one of the few that the majority did not pick the right answer so far. 40% um, did pick 102. And we'll cover Lake Michigan in more detail, the Western side specifically on Thursday evening. And Marcus and Christine have extended their lead. So congratulations to them. Next question. How much of Tanger Island has been lost due to rising seas? 23%, uh, 50%, 67%, or 75%? How much of Tanger, Tangier Island has been lost to rising seas? And as we discovered in the presentation, it is not projected to be around too much longer if the sea levels continue to rise. And the correct answer on that one was 67%. That was a pretty even split uh, among the choices. So that must've been a very tough question. And taking a quick look at our current leaderboard, um, Fred has moved into second, Marcus and Christine remain first, Barbara and Michael third place. Next question. Where will the Blue Angels fly on May 26th of this year? Is it at the AGLCA Docktails Looper Crawl event? Is it at Annapolis? Is it in Norfolk or is it in Pensacola? We mentioned the Blue Angels flying on the 26th and there is an AGLCA Looper Crawl Docktails event in St. Michael's that day that you can still sign up to attend if you'd like. So is that where the Blue Angels will be or will they be in one of those other cities? They will be in Annapolis. It is Navy uh, um, commissioning week. So tradition for them to fly there. Um, Pensacola is, of course, their home. And they also fly there most years. Um, sadly, they won't be at our event. And that puts Fred at the top of the leaderboard. Congratulations, Fred. Moving along. You can do the loop on a sailboat, but you must unstep the mast to clear bridges on which of the following waterways? The Illinois Waterway, the New York State Canals, neither of the above or both of the above. Where are those pesky low bridges on the Great Loop that force you to take down your mast if you're on a sailboat? And the correct answer is both of the above. That looks like another one that's been missed entered as correct. Again, our apologies. I promise you we check these things over <laughs> by more than one of us and we seem to have botched a couple of them. So we do apologize for that. That question obviously is going to get thrown out and the leaderboard remains the same since most people got that um, correct, but it was not marked as correct. So points were not allocated. Again, sorry about that. Where would the AGLCA Spring Rendezvous have been held this year if it weren't for COVID? So ideally we would have all been sitting face to face. That would have been in Rogersville, Alabama, in Charleston, South Carolina, in Norfolk, Virginia, or in Annapolis, Maryland. Where do we wish we all had been the first week in May? And that of course was Norfolk, Virginia. It is always on the East Coast um, because that's where most current loopers would be on that seasonal path. It has been in Charleston in the past. We've never attempted Annapolis. Um, Rogersville, Alabama is of course the site of the fall rendezvous. So our leaderboard remains mostly the same. Um, Roger and Chris though, moving up. I had not seen them approaching the top three before. Next question, which state is not on the main Great Loop route? New Jersey, Missouri, Mississippi, or Minnesota? Which of those states is not on the main Great Loop route? OK, 
Testing your geography here. Which of those states will you not go through on the Great Loop unless you take a side trip? And Minnesota is correct. You, of course, you can get there on the Upper Mississippi, uh, but unless you are, turn onto the Upper Mississippi to do a side trip, or unless you're starting from there and heading towards the main route, you will not be in Minnesota. Leaderboard, uh, Marcus and Christine have tied now for first with Fred and Michael and Barbara are in third. Roger and Chris are still making a good go of it in a close fourth place. Next question, we talked about how many completed the loop in 2021. How many boats completed the Great Loop in 2019? Was it 150, 160, 170, or 180? This is kind of a tough one, especially if you're not a numbers person. And the answer is 170. And that was another one where the, the choices were pretty well spread out. And the leaderboard still pretty much intact. Roger and Chris still making a good go for third place. Next question. To cruise the Chicago River, must what must your air draft be under? So put another way, what is the clearance on the Chicago River? Is it 15 feet, 17 feet, 19 feet, or 21 feet? Cruising the Chicago River is, is certainly a beautiful undertaking. Which of those clearances must you be able to get under though? Which, what's the lowest bridge? And the correct answer is 17 feet. So you need to be able to get under a 17 foot bridge to cruise the Chicago River. And our leaderboard, Michael and Barbara at the top alone. Roger and Chris have moved into second, oh, a three way tie for second. Roger and Chris, Fred. And Marcus and Christine, next question, what is the alternate route if you cannot go through the Chicago River? So if you're too tall for that 17 foot limitation on the Chicago River, what is the alternate route that's going to get you on your way? Is it the Illinois Waterway, the CalSAG, the Tentom, or the Ohio River? Which of those waterways is the alternate to taking the Chicago River Correct answer is the CalSAG. That runs a little bit south of the city of Chicago, but does not have those same bridge clearances. And that'll take you to the Illinois Waterway where you can continue your loop. Michael and Barbara, first place, Fred second, Roger and Chris and Marcus and Christine are tied for third. Next question, Hoppies expects to reopen its field dock in time for the 2021 season. True or false? Will Hoppies be reopened pumping fuel in time for the 2021 season? They will be open, true. They expect not to be open would be false. Hoppies expects to reopen its fuel dock in time for the 2021 season, true or false? That is true. In fact, they are now open for um, diesel. I recently reported in the forum that their credit card machine was not operational yet, but that is now operational and they expect to be also pumping gasoline in the very near future. I heard from them yesterday. So that's good news for loopers. Michael and Barbara still first, Fred second, Marcus and Christine third, Roger and Chris still making a really good run for it. Um, next question, you must do the entire great loop route continuously to earn the gold burgee. True or false, you must do the entire Great Loop route continuously to earn the gold burgee. That of course is false. You can take breaks in the route. You can take breaks for years. You can get a different boat and then pick up again. Um, again, the, the objective is to make it your own. 
and complete all of the interconnected waterways that make up the route, but it does not have to be continuous. Uh, Michael and Barbara first, Fred second, Roger and Chris third, uh, Marcus and Christine fourth. Uh, we seem to be jumping that third place quite frequently here now. On the traditional year long Great Loop pace, when are most loopers cruising the East Coast? Winter, spring, summer, or fall? So if you're on that kind of one year seasonal plan, um, during what season would you be on the East Coast? Winter, spring, summer, or fall? And that of course is spring. Um, that is why the spring rendezvous is always on the East Coast. And that is where many loopers are right now. And it's great to see the posts from everybody who's out there cruising after a very quiet 2020 at this time. Michael and Barbara, first place, Fred, second place, Roger and Chris, third place, but 75 points behind and Marcus and Christine just behind that in fourth. Next question, which small town was selected as the best on the loop? Was it Charlevoix, Michigan? Beaufort, South Carolina, Tangier Island, Virginia, or Paducah, Kentucky. We're looking for the town that was selected as the number one best small town on the loop. And that was Beaufort, South Carolina. Um, Charlevoix was in the running I believe Charlevoix was number two. Um, I'll have to check that because Charlevoix may have been number one. Um, so that's a, that's an interesting question. We're going to have to double check our, our stats on that. Um, Michael and Barbara, 1500. Fred, 1500. Roger and Chris, 1350. So they're widening the lead a little bit in first place. How many different colored burgees are available to AGLCA members? One, two, three, or four? How many member burgees? colors are there? And I'm going to give you a hint here. This would not include sponsor colors. So which are available just for members? One, two, three, or four different colors of Burgies. And that is, uh, the answer to is three, 86% got that right. There is of course of the, is the white, which signifies AGLCA membership and in progress. There is the gold for those who have completed once, and there's the platinum for those who have completed more than once. And Fred remains in the lead, Michael and Barbara second, Roger and Chris third, Marcus and Christine fourth. Next question, how many active memberships does AGLCA currently have? Is it 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000? How many active memberships does AGLCA currently have? 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000? And good news, the home port career has reminded me that Charlevoix was number one. Beaufort was the previous uh, number one best small town on the loop. So those of you who guessed Charlevoix and were credited with the right answer did in fact have the right answer. So that is good news. Um, the correct answer is 5,000 memberships. So that was another one that was pretty well split. Um, but we cur currently have just over 5,000 active memberships in AGLCA. So Fred, in the lead by 100 points, Michael and Barbara uh, with 1550, Roger and Chris with 1475, getting harder to catch those leaders. The next question, AGLCA has members from all U.S. states and all Canadian provinces and territories. True or false? Our membership roster includes members from all 50 US states and all Canadian provinces and territories. True or false? That is true and two thirds of you got that right. So congratulations at the last rendezvous. I think we we're missing one of the territories. Um, and we actually did have a member from there, but it wasn't listed in, the, in their profile. Uh, but now we legit in everybody's profile have all of them uh, accounted for there. So Fred still up by 100, Michael and Barbara second, Roger and Chris third, 100 points ahead of Marcus and Christine. Next question, which lock is preparing for a potential closure in the late winter or early spring of 2022? 
Is it the St. Lucie lock, the Port Canaveral lock, the Witten lock, or the Chicago lock? This has been in the forum recently. The Corps of Engineers was collecting feedback on the plan to close this lock for January, February, and March of 2022. Which lock was that? It is the St. Lucie lock. Um, there is, of course, that is on the um, Okeechobee waterway, so there is an alternate route, but it is a long alternative. You have to go through the Keys. Um, we are, we have pulled our members for feedback and are going to be submitting some comments on that shortly. Next, we have um, the leaderboard, Fred still 100 points up, as well as Mark, Michael and Barbara, and then Roger and Chris 100 points in third place. What is the next planned AGLCA rendezvous? The fall 2021 rendezvous in Rogersville, Alabama, the winter 2022 rendezvous in Fort Myers, the spring 2022 rendezvous in Norfolk, or the fall 2022 in Alabama. What's our next planned rendezvous? And it is the fall 2021 in Alabama, and we are extremely hopeful that that is able to happen as planned if things continue to go the way they are going with the virus, that should be the case. And Fred maintains his lead, but it's dropped to a 50 point lead. Michael and Barbara second, Roger and Chris third. Lance has moved up into fourth place. So congratulations on that, Lance. Next question, the diamond burgee is reserved for those who have completed the Great Loop five or more times. Is that true or false? There's a diamond burgee for those who have completed the Great Loop um, five or more times. And that is false. There is no diamond to Burgie. Um, we recognize the gold as completing once and the platinum as completing more than once. And we have not attempted to create Burgie colors for anything beyond that. Um, I will tell you that the most loops ever, um, that boat just started its 31st great loop. So there is a goal for you all. Fred, still at the top of the leaderboard. Next question, which of the following are benefits of AGLCA membership? The discussion forum, harbor host access, the cost of looping calculator, or all of the above? Which are benefits of AGLCA membership? And that's the first question 100% of you got correct. It is all of the above. Those are all benefits of AGLCA membership. So um, well done. Glad you all knew that one. And we'll take a quick check at the leaderboard. Fred maintains the lead, but only by 25 points. Michael and Barbara in second. Roger and Chris in third. Lance, Marcus, and Christine tied for fourth. Um, I believe we've only got two more questions. Uh, AGLCA tracks every looper boat so we can verify that you've completed the route. Is that true or false? Are we tracking you to see if you've actually completed the route? Little big brother-ish of us, but are we doing it? That is false. We are not tracking you to see if you've completed the route. It is the honor system. You're honestly not really cheating anyone but yourself. If you were to falsify uh, your wake crossing. Um, so there you have it. We are not big brother tracking you. And Fred remains in the lead by 25 points. Next question. What is the app AGLCA has adopted to help you record your route and find other members on the waterway? Is it Nebo, Nuvo, Looper Locator, or none of the above? What is the free app that AGLCA members use to find each other on the waterway? Here's a hint, it also has a tracker, um, but it is not mandatory, so we're not tracking you. Um, which of, what is that app? Nebo, Nuvo, Looper Locator, or none of the above? 
and that is Nebo. I'm very happy most of you knew that. Looper Locator was actually a many years ago early attempt at that, probably 10 years ago or more. So a few of you may have been around for a while or took a guess. And uh, Fred hangs on to the lead by 50 points now. Roger and Chris third, um, 200 points above the next closest. Um, next question, AGLCA does which of the following when you report your loop completion to us? Sends you a back a looperate, adds you to our stats, alerts your hometown newspaper about your accomplishments, or all of the above. What are some of the benefits that you get when you complete the great loop and report that to AGLCA? And the answer is all of the above. We are running a little bit over and I apologize that for that. I know we've got some of our um, gold loopers who are serving as the um, facilitators of the small groups are, are waiting on us. We are just about finished here. Uh, Michael and Barbara, first place, 2075. Fred bounced down to second, Roger and Chris in a strong third. This is the final question. More people complete the Great Loop than reach the summit of Everest every year. True or false? More people complete the Great Loop than reach the summit of Everest. If you think more people complete, complete the Great Loop than Everest, then you would put true. If you think more people complete Mount Everest each year, then that is false. More people complete the Great Loop than reach the summit of Everest every year. True or false, and that is false. More people actually reach the summit of Everest than complete the Great Loop every year. So let's see our final leaderboard. And our winners are Michael and Barbara, followed by Roger and Chris in second place, and Fred Bull in third. That was kind of a last minute change. So congratulations, um, Michael and Barbara. You will win a three-year AGLCA membership extension. Thank you to everyone who played along. We are going to wrap this up now. You are going to log off of this Zoom meeting and log on with the second link that you received so that you can attend your small groups. Uh, we are running a few minutes late, so let's give you, um, you know, about seven minutes. Let's plan to convene at 8.15. We'll open the rooms for the small groups, so please try to arrive before 8.15 um, when we open the rooms. We will see you shortly. Thanks for being with us.